And we're back. So, this is a problem that I actually saw when I was moving the car when I moved houses, is as I rolled the car, the car gained about 10 degrees of camber. So, upon further investigation, bushings are way too soft. We need to change that. Plus, as I redesigned the lower control arm, that upper arm no longer needs to hold things in place so it can be changed to a heim joint so we got to press out the old bearings they are trashy horrible and they are super soft so i decided to make my own bushings perks of having a 3d printer is you mean you got to use it so this is actually solid infilled print out of abs so it is essentially an engineering plastic. It is super strong and should hold up to whatever I need to put it through. But the only bad thing about plastic is if you get uneven loading, it can eventually create grooves, channels, and overall bad stuff. So you have to make a sleeve for the inside of the bushing. And it's quite literally as simple as cutting a piece of tube to the right size, the right length, and pushing it in or pulling it in, depending on how you want to actually do it. So we basically just have to bevel the edges just a little bit. That way it doesn't rip the plastic as it presses into it. That little bevel just gets it started and helps it along its way. And of course the cameras can't focus. So how I chose to do it was essentially use a bolt and use some washers, stack them up, and draw that plastic bushing over that sleeve. And these bolts have been used for lots of things, so the threads are kind of mucked up. They kind of don't work right. But for the purpose of what we're doing, they work just fine. I plan to get all new suspension bolts once it's finalized and that. Just ran out of thread. So grab a different bolt. Doesn't have as much of an unthreaded section. Now I chose to actually leave the metal ring on the old bushing in there just because I could make my own bushings custom to size and it wasn't really that big of a problem. So that's one thing to consider is when I press it out easily, it just left that metal sleeve of the old bushing in there and that was fine for me. So yeah, make it yourself bushings. and similar washer stack up to actually draw it into the knuckle. And it is worth noting that I'm using these big I wouldn't necessarily call them fender washers because they have a thickness, but I'm using the big washers that actually span the whole size of the knuckle in between the heim joints and the bushings in order to help 
take up the slack and allow metal to metal contact. So now we have to make space for a brake caliper. And these knuckles actually had the slides of the factory caliper built into the casting. So there was no just mounting holes for calipers. So we just have to make space for calipers. Now this is kind of a uh, do-it-yourself big, big brake kit. These are our circle track calipers. The rotors are actually off of the same Ford Explorer model that these rear knuckles came off of, but those are the fronts. And I actually had to swap out to the, the spacer as the caliper was actually contacting the table when I flipped it over. So now we just get that knuckle and whole assembly off the table a little bit. And as you can see, cutting out that part of the caliper or that part of the knuckle gives enough space for the caliper to sit where it needs to in relation to the rotor and have the pads line up in the right place. So let's make some tabs. So we got to mount the caliper somehow. Now it is important to see how the pad is in relation to the rotor. And I actually had to shim, shim the caliper up a little bit just to get the caliper center line and the rotor center line. Everything needs to be centered with relations to each other. And also the pads need to be on the same exterior curve as the rotor. So you can't just use any pads with any rotor. They have to be very similar size. That way they actually interface correctly. So that is how the magical stack up was a fender washer plus a quarter. And that seemed to get the caliper in the right place with relation to the rotor. So we have our tabs made up. We just need to find some way to actually hold that. And this took way, way too long to try and figure out a way to hold the caliper in place pressure on the right spot as the caliper is I guess radially not centered in weight so the second I let go of the caliper it actually falls away as you can see essentially you try to use magnets different weights tried to tack it in place by hand but it just falls away. So the trick was to add some filler to the tab. And then once it was there, actually hold it with my hand long enough to actually place a tack, get a little more filler in there, weld it, hold it, and then it doesn't fall away. Now I can tack everything else, get that other tab right where I want it to be, just maintaining the brake pad to rotor relationship. And the old test spin, make sure it's not binding up, make sure it spins free. That's, that's all we're trying to do. And this is where you get to laugh at me because I uh, put the bolts in the wrong way and yeah, they couldn't get out. So I essentially had to pull the caliper, yes, pull the caliper in half and then it was able to just kind of pull apart and pulled it off. I'm tacking nuts to the back side of these tabs. That way I don't have to try and fish a wrench in behind there as I'm tightening up the calipers. 
and they don't really need to be fully welded as you don't actually see that much torque once you start to get a bolt through. Weld up your tabs, make sure that they're still planar with that um, wheel bearing face and time to assemble everything. Now this stack up is actually very important because that was the required offset for my wheels to clear the calipers. I required an inch and three quarters of an inch just to clear the wheels. As the one downside of running very large brakes is your wheels tend to hit them. Now it's time to modify that upper arm as we got rid of the kind of pronged approach I had previously, just out of necessity to keep the knuckle from translating forward and backwards through its motion. Now this is kind of my homemade heim joint system essentially just a washer with the right nut welded on the back side and ice to the tube and I actually found that I can rotate keep the torch in one hand in the same place with the right angle and just rotate the whole assembly in one hand and yes these are left-handed heim joints I got a giant box of them very cheap because they were left-handed now it's time to put it all back together. Yes, these bolts are entirely the wrong length, but once everything's finalized, I'll go through and get the right bolts. Here it is. Both sides are done. I did the one side previous to this one just to make sure it all worked. But as you can see, rotate one, the other one rotates, both have rotors, both have calipers, everything is mint.